Hi everyone, how is everybody doing today? So, I um, hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are. Um, I'm coming on tonight, I'm sitting in my craft room and crafting and I thought, hmm, I wonder whether I should do a video on this. Now you've probably seen what I'm about to show you like a million gazillion times. But like I tell everybody, and I should take my own advice sometimes, is that even though we see things from different people, and nobody sees it from what we're doing and um, what we pick up. Um, and that's what makes us all our channels different. Because if we all did the same thing and all used the same thing, then um, we'd all be the same. So, like I say, um, the technique that I'm sort of trying to show you will be the same. But I do something a little bit different than what I've seen. So hopefully going to show you that. Now I always get asked and asked and asked. I've done three journals last year and in each journal that I did, everybody asked me on how I did my papers. Uh, how did you tea stain them and how did you coffee stain them? Well, I'm going to show you. Now what I've got in front of me, I'm just trying to work out where I've got my paper. Uh -huh. What I've got in front of me is, first of all, these are book pages. Now I have tea stained them, um, but I didn't leave them in for too long. This is something that I do a little bit different. And I've tea stained some pages. Now they have got tones and rips in, but to me it doesn't matter. Because um, if I can't use them as a full page, then I won't. I'll make envelopes and ephemera out of them. So I've done, and as you can see, some of them aren't full pages. Some of them I will have to make them right of, and then this one did come out as a full page where you, where you can fold it now. So I'm going to show you first off um, my tea stain process. I have um, what, why I did this tonight was I wanted some laces tea stained, and I thought, well, I've got the bowl out. Um, I've got all my materials I need out. Why don't I do some papers? So I've got them to hand when I need them. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, like I say, I do a little bit different than what I've seen. And I'll show you what I do different. So first off, um, it's on a tray. It's not on my table because um, underneath my table, this is my, if my own ephemera I've been working on. Um, under my table is my mat, my my pink rubber mat. So I want to protect that in, in all cases. I want to protect that. So I've got a couple of things. I've got a bowl. Now, in this bowl was water that had boiled from the kettle. So be really careful when you put your hands in. I usually use warm water. My hands are probably brown, I expect. Um, because it helps. I find it helps. Um, but I have seen others use cold water, so it's a trial and error thing. So if you are using water from the kettle, please be really careful because obviously it's hot. So what I do, um, I put, I only fill the jug up halfway. I don't go all the way with it because I've done all my laces I want to do. They're drying so I can't show you them. Um, I've done all my laces and now I want my paper. So I want to use what's left in this bowl. So four tea bags have been added to this bowl and I left the tea bags um, in there for a good 10 minutes and I squeezed the tea bag on the side of the bowl with a spoon, each tea bag. I took the tea bags out. Now I use four. If I'm using, if I'm doing big pieces of lace or say I'm, um, I want to do, say I want to do a wall hanging. Um, then I would use a bigger bowl and I would stick an extra tea bag in. But like I say, it's a trial and error thing. So have a look to see what what you find and what you like. Because the, with tea staining and coffee staining, I found, um, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, you always end up with something different. It doesn't matter. So it's just trial and error thing, whether you put four, three, five, whatever you put in. So four tea bags have been put in there with some water from the cow and I did about that much cold water and I left it to cool. Once it was cool then I took the tea bags out and this is what we have in front of me. So I've got a bowl full of tea 
I have some kitchen roll now these are like I said I was just doing and I thought oh, why did I wash my why should I film it so this is why the kitchen roll um has got tea stains on it but after I've done what I want to do I'm not going to throw these out because I want to keep them and the reason I want to keep them is because there is something coming up on my channel where I'm going to be using kitchen roll and um wet wipes to create something so keep an eye out for that so i'm not going to be throwing these out because as you can see when this dries um i'll end up with tea staining on them so i've got that on my tray so minus these little pages which i'll explain it all in due course so a tray a bowl um some kitchen roll now i've got quite a bit of thickness to it there's two pieces to each layer so there's one layer two three so it's probably the six six to eight pieces of kitchen roll on my tray then i've also got um by the side of me which i will alternate this i have got one two three pieces of kitchen roll folded in half um and that gives me a good size to put an a4 piece of paper on so that's the side of me so what do i want to tea stain well you can tea stain almost anything you can do laces doilies papers anything you want to do but there is like i say with th certain things you will find that you'll do and you think oh um happy accents is what i call them so the first things um i want to show you is paper and how i sort of get the wrinkle facts um on that one without it tearing like I did on you okay I did that on purpose just to show you the difference so how did I get that um, without it tearing I'm gonna show you so in my on my tray I should have three pieces of paper which I have now this isn't any special paper it's a4 uh, printing paper that's all it is so all you want to do is just scrunch it up loosely in your hand first and then you want to now my water is cold so i can put my hand in um but like i say my hand's going to turn brown and i know it will so i'm going to use the spoon to help me and guide me to cover this paper in total now the longer you leave it in there that goes for least two the longer um your color is going to be basically so if you leave her in there now i left mine in there overnight once and my paper went completely dark and even though some people like that look i didn't i found it too dark to work with so um the light how i get that i don't know whether it'll come up on camera but it's sort of like a, a real pale brown dull color it's what i would if i saw that color on vintage laces i would then say it's vintage laces so it's completely up to you if you want a um, darker tone than this leave it in there longer so mine haven't been in that long mine have been in um, for each page i did over there it went in for a couple of minutes so sorry for the banging i take this out oh it has ripped because i picked it up and i'm gonna just gently squeeze all the dye out now it is raveled up in the bowl how do you get it straight i'll show you in a second i'm going to be putting it on the kitchen roll beside of me just for the minute while i do these two other ones so loosely in your hand and i'm going to do this one as well now you can do almost anything you can do laces papers anything um doilies anything you want to cover you can cover with tea dye and coffee stain um and i always get asked about it and you know it's one of those things where i forget to do a video until i'm actually doing it and then i think oh somebody asked me that last week how did i do it so like i say you've probably seen this technique I should imagine many a times so I'm gonna put the, the tray on the floor because it's the only place I can put it at the moment let me see because I actually want yeah <laughs> I can see that filling on my bed so 
So what I actually want is this. If you find, I thought my thing goes on the floor then. If you find that it's too wet and it's just too wet for you, put another three piece underneath. And I'm going to start drying it with my heat gun. So, there's two speeds on my heat gun. And you're not going to be able to see because there's paint on there. There's a low setting and a high setting. So, how to get it in sort of an A4 without it ripping. You first off, on a low setting, as it is, just go over it. Now, these two I can leave and, you know, and come back to. Because once you see how I do it, you'll see how I do it for them too, as well. And just keep going over. Now you're thinking, like, you are not unraveling that at all. No, I'm not. Not at the minute. Because if I start doing it, what will happen is, it will start tearing. Because, of course, it's wet paper. But if you start drying it, it will naturally... See how it's coming out? It will naturally come out for you. So, rinse, the aim is to be really patient with it, because um, like I say, you go in too quick and it's going to tear. So I'm going to zoom in for you guys to see what I'm actually doing, not the towel. I'm going to keep the heat on it, it's just resting on my table at the moment. And it should, once you've got the, the majority, what you want to achieve is this, the outside. Because the inside is obviously going to still be wet. I'm going to dry that and do cold. But the outside, you want it so it's like, um, feels damp, moist. Like, not moist, damp. Like, it's not wet, but it's not dry either. Right. Now I should be able to very gently pull that apart without it breaking. So otherwise you're just going to get strips of paper in your hand. Now I don't mind it breaking because I, like I say, I can make ephemera out of it. I can make little pockets. You can make anything you want out of ripped paper. Don't necessarily need to make the pages out of ripped paper. Let's try again. how it's naturally I'm only very gently pulling it and what will happen is it will come out really crumpled and there is a way of which I'm going to about to show you in a second of decrumpling it if you didn't want it crumpled if you wanted it flat for example so you didn't want it crumpled at all the way to do it is you want you pack your you want not a bowl you would that you would want the same size as an A4. If you do say for example I'm doing an A4 piece of paper, then you want your pan to be A4 for it to remain flat. Put it in flat and slide it back out, and that's how you achieve flat paper. So I love the idea of it having a crinkle effect. Now it's at this stage where you think, more I'll pull it a little bit more. Don't pull it just yet because it, it is still wet. Because of course we've only dried the outside, we haven't dried the inside. So what will happen is, if I carry on pulling that now, it's going to pull into like different pieces.
uh, has ripped slightly here. I'm not bothered by it ripping after you know in big amounts because like you say I am going for I'm not going for a full piece if I wanted a piece of paper that didn't have any rips in then I would put it in flat dry it um not that it's completely dry then crumple it in my hand and then dry it a bit more so there's another way to do it but I quite like doing it this way because you never know what you're gonna get out of it until you finish drying it so I'm going to do it one last time, so just gently pulling the edges out. Right. So that is bit in the centre. I'm not bothered by it because, see all this paper fire? This can have this can have a page of its own. So I'm gonna leave this at the moment and I'm gonna concentrate and dry this. So I'm gonna go full speed. I'm going to fast forward this section so guys if you don't want to watch this section just fast forward it I don't know what that noise was fast forward the section and um, I will I won't fast forward it too much just so that you can still see what I'm doing um, because it's the same process as I've just done on that so bear with me and I will be back So, I've done three. So that's my little technique to get um, your papers. Now, that one, as you can see, turned out sort of, as I would say, perfect. This one has got a few tears in, but like I said before, it does not bother me because I can make something around those tears. And then, of course, the first one did have a big tear, and I think it's because I pulled it a bit too much when I was trying to... Um, dry it out so the tip is to keep the dryer on it 
while you're unplugging it but don't pull it quite hard this is what i did on the very first one again does it bother me no because i can make something out of it so how to straighten them out first off um i'm going to show you i'm going to show you on this one what you can do now this is what i do when it comes to making them a bit different so let me get my little gadget to out and then i'm going to show you using that tea dye what you can do a bit different so use now because this is a, it's not completely dry and um, because even though i've just dried it with a dryer it's not going to give me that full drying effect just go over it with your bone folder um I have seen people use a pair of straighteners to straighten them out, not on obviously. Um, you can do that, I suppose. Um, you could even put it on low heat, I should imagine. But I'm not going to do it because every time I venture into things that can catch fire, <laughs> I always end up catching fire. So I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is these, which I usually do to my papers anyway. So just pull all the corners like they would be. I do. So that one, I would say that one's done. And I'm going to do, let's do another one. Let's do this one, because this one I did earlier. I haven't straightened them out. Now, there's a couple of things I do a little bit different. I might have to do this video, like coffee staining and tea staining, in two different videos. But like I say, it's something that you've probably seen before but i've never done a video on it um because it's one of those things that you think oh everybody's seen that but i always get asked about it and i think oh everybody's seen that they don't want to see me do it but i and i always tell everybody it doesn't matter how many times people have seen something if they if follow you then they want to see you do it so i need to take my own advice i do apologize for that thing because it's going right through my head so one can only imagine what it's doing to you. So I'm just going to pull the, all the edges. Right, so I've now got two pieces of flat paper. So can you see on this one especially, I've got like tea stains. That's the only way to describe it. Even though the page is completely covered in tea stain, I've got patches where it's been darker, where it's just been crumpled up and I've dried it. So I'm going to show you on this one what I would do a little bit different. Now it's had a course um, of five minutes in the bowl, I've straightened it out. I am gonna, this is what I did prior to Christmas, get a brush of any kind, one that has, I'm just checking I'm still recording then. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find, no, not that one. Right, let me get my brushes. That's an easy option. Um, oh, perfect. So you want a brush that's got um, a bit of quite a lot of bristles on. Anything like this one or these won't work. You need something that's got quite a long brush bristles on. Dab it in your tea stain, bearing in mind the bowl is still next to me. And all you're going to do is flick it. And because it's tea stained once, you'll have blotches on your paper. Now it's totally up to you how many you want to obviously put on, how dark you want to go. So if you wanted a dark spot, and then I would dry that, leave as it is at the moment, and I'm going to show you on this piece of paper. Now, bear in mind, some of the freckles have gone from this side to this side. So, the other way to do it is this. Use your brush as a, a guiding tool 
and do all the edges like you would an ink pad basically but you do just doing it with a brush now I'm not going to go around all the edges because knowing me this paper is going to get cut up whether I use it as one paper or two and you can see how it's giving me the edge now I'm going to put this back on the floor I'm going to dry it again and this time um, again I will fast forward for you to see what I'm doing That's how I would, and you can obviously straighten it back up again. Now it's totally up to you how you do it. So you can see the splodge marks on there, and on this one, you can see where I've gone around the edges, especially in the corners. So that's how I would tea stain and give my paper sort of a different technique. Um, I will show you. Um, it'll be in the ne next video though how I go from this paper into like tuck spots and stuff because I know most of you asked me how I did that on um, a journal I made before Christmas um, and that journal got given to Angie of course and she did a wonderful video on it for me but most of you asked me how did I do how did I go about doing the tuck spots and that well this is exactly how I did it now the book pages which i showed you right at the very start instead of putting it in as one page rip the pages up so you create yourself different pages because if you think about it the more pages you put it in by the time you've come to the bottom piece because of course you take all the pieces out and this will be at the bottom this piece will be darker than the rest and leave it in there for longer now this these only got put in for two three minutes not even that but um real reality i would leave them in for uh, about five minutes just to give myself that uh bit of dye that's going on so like i say i know it's um, a technique that many of you have probably seen but um i just thought why not take my own advice and do something that you keep asking me so i thought hmm, why not do it so i really do hope you enjoyed this video um i hope i've given you some inspiration um i will say many of channels i can't name them all but many of them um have given me different like uh, ways of doing it um one two channels that i can think of off the top of my head was um it's gone oh God. nick the booksmith was one of them and i'm a cool mom oh i i'm, I'm sure she's called i'm a cool mom she was another one um and yvonne i can't remember the, the other one yvonne i can't remember her last name on youtube but she does excellent journals and she shows you sort of um steps on how she creates her so those are where I get my inspiration from um, but like you say the technique of the brush I haven't seen anybody do um, but maybe it's up there I have seen it just forgotten it because like I say we get inspiration from different channels and then we put our own stamp on it which makes it our own piece so really do hope you enjoyed this video thank you for all your support keep watching there is um, a challenge coming up soon so excited uh challenge coming up soon which i really can't wait um to show you all what i what what the challenge is what it's all about and yeah i'm really excited so like i say keep watching and i will back with you shortly bye for now bye